So this is the back of the Coolpix P950 and you have your, your standard LCD screen right here and then you have your electronic viewfinder right here. What I really like about the P950 is that it has a sensor right here that will detect when you've put your eye close to the viewfinder and so it will turn off the main screen and you'll see the image inside the electronic viewfinder. It's good, it's a nice feature, but sometimes just by holding the camera close to your body or if another object passes close by to the sensor, the main screen will turn off and that can be annoying. So that's something you have to be aware of and to avoid at all times. It's not a biggie, it's not anything serious, but it's just something to bear in mind. But overall, I think it's a very good idea to have the option of this switching from the main LCD screen to the viewfinder once your eye gets close. Most times it's very useful. There's also a button here that you can also use to switch it manually, but I never have to use that because uh, usually the sensor picks up when my eye is close to the electronic viewfinder. Now one of the features I really like about the P950 is that if you press the display button right here, then you'll have some different options coming up on the screen. Crosshairs, level meter, and basically that just helps you to get your subject in the center of the screen or to just, if you have a, a very complex scene, it will help you to distribute the different subjects properly. Uh, in, in this uh, version of the display, you'll see that there's an artificial horizon and right now you see that green line that green line is telling you that your camera is level now even though the camera is level you might think oh wait that imagery i'm seeing in the background the scenery doesn't look exactly level so the green line tells you if the camera is level but depending on what scenery you're filming it, the scenery might not be level so that's a judgment call. You as a person taking the picture will have to decide what you're looking for. And this is very useful because, especially when you're doing uh, video recordings, especially if you're filming like a movie or whatever, if the camera tilts, then your screen is not gonna be level and that's gonna throw you off. And of course, if you wanna change this, just hit the display button and you know things will start disappearing. So if you hit that, all of that disappears. If you hit that, it reappears. Now, what if you don't want all these things on the screen? What if you don't want the level meter and all those crosshairs and all that fancy stuff? What do you do? Let's talk about that. So here's what we do. We go to menu, we go across, we scroll down to settings, we go across, monitor settings. Uh, obviously I was in here before, which is why I went back to monitor settings, but if anything, just scroll down to monitor settings, you hit okay and then you scroll down and that will tell you what options are going to come up so you can view or hide the framing grid uh let's keep the framing grid on view or hide histograms let's turn that off and the virtual horizon would i what i referred to earlier as, as an artificial horizon because of my aviation background let's turn that off uh, i hardly ever use that because as a photographer, I usually determine based on what I'm seeing in the viewfinder if my picture is properly framed and balanced or not. So let's hit menu again and we exit. So you see we're back on the screen and now my virtual horizon is gone. I hit display, I get this framing, and I hit display again, it disappears. I hit display and everything disappears. So. I may press display just to get the framing right initially, just as a guide to help me out, and then I can press it again and just get everything off once I've gotten everything lined up properly. Okay, so for those of you like me who wear glasses, that can be a problem because especially since summer is coming up, you're going to be on vacation and you want to wear your sunglasses. So I take off my reading glasses and I want to be able to use a viewfinder, but if you're like me and you're over 40 and your eyesight is not as good as it used to be when you're younger, you're going to be saying, I can't see this. And 
here's a very good solution that Nikon implemented on this camera. If you use the viewfinder, then basically you can turn this wheel right here. And by turning this wheel, you can match the prescription in your reading glasses and that will help you to see the subject much better. So it's gonna look blurred at first, but once you turn this wheel and you get everything all lined up, excellent. And then you can snap that picture. And that's one of the main reasons why I wear a cap because you're, especially here in Florida, you have sunlight major part of the year. So you wanna take a picture and you can't use a screen, this display screen because it's so bright out. And so you wanna use the viewfinder. So by wearing my cap, I can block that light that normally bleeds into the viewfinder. I have a nice dark screen and I can line up my subject and snap my picture. That's it. So one very important tool that I definitely had to get in addition to the two other lenses that I have, as you saw in my earlier videos on, on, on this channel, I have the ND filter, the variable ND filter, and I also have the solar filter for taking pictures of the sun. However, another important filter that you might want to get is the polarizing filter. And what the polarizing filter allows you to do is that you see how the there's this gloss, there's a sheen on the water. If you want to get rid of that sheen, then what you do, you put the polarizing lens onto the camera and then it will allow you to capture subjects that are below the surface. But because of that sheen, that gloss on the water, you can't see them. And that's a polarizing effect of light bouncing off the water. And sometimes you, you need to see what's happening below the water. If maybe you want to get a nice picture of a turtle, a fish, or some other object that's below the water's surface. And that's where you would need a polarizing filter. A polarizing filter is also important or comes in very handy when you, you're taking a picture of a building with glass. And you might want to take a picture of what's behind that glass. It might be people inside an office or it might be a garden or something else. Maybe you're at the zoo and you're taking pictures of animals in a cage or an aquarium and then you have this sheen, this gloss sitting on the glass and when you take the picture all you see is this sheen or this bright light coming off the glass. Using the polarizing filter and adjusting it accordingly can allow you to get rid of that gloss and actually capture the subject that's sitting behind that glass. So let's look at an example of how we can use the polarizing filter. Now, bear in mind that the none of the filters that I bought will fit inside the lens hood that comes with the camera. So if you need to put the polarizing filter on, you will definitely have to unscrew the lens hood before you can put the polarizing filter in. Now, in the description below, you'll see a link to all the filters I've bought for my Nikon Coolpix P950. However, if you don't want to buy those filters for the simple fact that you want your filters to fit in a lens hood, then because a lens hood is very important for getting rid of light that's coming in from the sides and you have some more, some bigger lens hoods or uh, some more extravagant ones that will block more light, peripheral light from coming in from the side. And there's another kit. If I hadn't bought all these lenses separately, I probably would have gotten that kit with a separate uh, lens filters, and that's also in the description below, so you can check that out. Now when the camera is off, the lens is recessed, so getting this filter in is gonna be very, very hard. So basically what I have to do is turn the camera on by coming over here, let me see. And once I turn the camera on, that lens pops out and then I can screw this in. That's the only thing I don't like about this camera uh, when it's off but 
I'm not complaining really because for what this camera does, I'm not going to be whining and moaning about every little thing. I mean, screwing it. I mean, they do recommend that in order to put a filter in, you should turn the camera off. But in this case, it's not possible. So, you know, you just have to work with what you have, but it's a minor inconvenience. So I'm, I'm not going to hit uh, uh, Nikon for that. That's, that's not a strike against Nikon. So now I'm turning the dial on the polarized uh, filter and as I turn the dial you can see that the image I'm getting less and less uh, polarization now you can barely see the waves for me I'm looking on with my naked eye and I can see a lot more reflection coming off the water but because I'm using the polarized lens the picture looks much clearer and we can see that fish is just hanging out there and that's one of the ways in which fishes can avoid detection. Uh, somehow they know that it's hard to see them from above, depending on the angle you're at. And I guess because of this overconfidence, they don't realize sometimes that an eagle or a hawk is, or an osprey is coming in from overhead, from directly overhead, and they catch them off guard.